Hello, humanoids. Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a real warp bubble. By the way, that was my Bobby the Brain Heenan impression. I watched some old WWF stuff from like the late 70s and early 80s. Part of my childhood. But anyway, we're here in the sciences again. This will be put in my playlist for the sciences. It's one of my nerdy things I love to do. As always, I'll put the link for the article in the descriptions. I usually just read them word for word, throw in my two cents. And this one kind of um, got me excited. Uh, I, I had to do a little bit of work with this because it's too clickbaity and not enough um, peer review type abstract stuff. But I finally found enough stuff that I think it's legit. I wouldn't be surprised if I get punked on this one. However, this is the world's first real warp bubble created by accident as scientists mow future warp drive. And right away, Star Trek, nerd, science fiction, you got me. Um, hook. <laughs> I got to read the articles and keep hitting the links to all the articles. So this is uh, from... Hmm, what is this? Uh, FantasticalFuturist.com uh, Does it give me any information on who wrote the article? Because I'd like to give credit. Uh, maybe at the end. Oh, you know what? Let me just go to the end. Then. Is this by somebody? No, I don't see credit given for the article. So if I come across it or I find it, I usually like to do that. Uh... Why this matters in brief, lab accidents are creating all manner of breakthroughs at the moment in antibiotics and now warp drives. What's next? Oh, by the way, I was going to do one on the uh, antibiotics or the disease prevention. Uh, yeah, I guess this is just uh, fantasticalfuturist.com and they're doing a highlight on the article. And I'd like to give credit, but... Hmm. All right, so I'll start reading. At the moment, warp drive, the ability to travel faster than light in science fiction, even though mathematicians have recently suggested that it is actually possible, or at least it was science fiction until the world's first warp bubble was accidentally discovered by DARPA-funded researchers, according to the scientist's report. It was discovered by the Limitless Space Institute, LS team, led by former NASA warp drive expert, Dr. Harold G. Quote, Sonny White. To be clear, our finding is not a warp bubble analog. It is a real, albeit humble and tiny warp bubble, said White in a statement, quickly dispensing with the notion that this is anything other than the creation of an actual, real-world warp bubble. Hence the significance, he added. <laughs> it is so funny because hey, yeah, I'm stoned, but I get goosebumps. Like, this is so fascinating to me, you know. I'm 51, well, going to be 52 soon, I think, if, I, if my maths are right. And, man, I get so excited, <laughs> even if I get punked. I'll continue. The discovery took place during a research project studying not warp drives, nor the 1984 theories of mathematician Miguel Alcubierre, <laughs> that first offered the potential for what warp technology might look like. Rather, it happened during a project studying cashmere cavities and their ability to produce energy. Though an incredible fluke took an engineer conducting the research at the exact right time, one who was familiar with warp technology research and knew what he was looking at, to realize that this is totally unrelated research had produced a warp bubble. The observed effect was not an analog, not something similar to a warp bubble, but a very small, very humble, true-to-life structure that matched Al Kubier's research perfectly, a.k.a. it was an actual real-life warp bubble. <laughs> and that's the picture I put on my thumbnail. By the way, by the way, by the way, the it says on the um, thing I used, real warp bubble, but I put an exclamation point, so it looks like bubble-o. <laughs> Alright, whatever. 
Gotta live with it, I guess. I'm not in the mood to go through that again. Baking the thumbnails. And anyway, that's the picture of the nanoparticle fucking warp bubble. So I'll continue. Now for the first time, we finally know what physical tools it's going to take to create a real warp bubble. Which means that warp field theory has made the move from outlandish science fiction into something we can actually build in the real world. Using tools and technology we already have. And that's awesome. Most people are familiar with the concept of warp drive, though, from what they've seen on Star Trek. Hello, I'm playing the Star Trek game right now. Or well, you know. <clears throat> but today, our spacecraft are currently limited to the laws of standard Einsteinian physics. To accelerate your ship, you have to throw something in the opposite direction to the one which you wish to travel. Throughout the history of av aviation and aeronautics, this meant burning fuel and shooting out the back of the ship in a vigorous physical reaction. The limitation of this approach is that eventually you run out of stuff to throw. No fuel. Like. The other limitation is that your ship is still subject to Einstein's equation describing special relativity, which states that as you approach the speed of light, more and more of the energy you expend goes into increasing your own mass until you reach the point where no matter how much more energy you put in, you can't go any faster. And you never quite reach the speed of light. It's impossible to accelerate faster than light using standard physics, because your ship just gets more massive and the more energy you put in, and it gets so massive you can't do anything more with it. The concept of the Alcubierre Al warp bubble makes things interesting. If you surround the local Euclidean, I used to know that word when I, uh, anyway, space, your ship occupies with a warp bubble, then push the warp bubble instead of the ship itself, Einstein equation is sidestepped. It's still valid inside the warp bubble, but the bubble itself can theoretically move faster than light without breaking the laws of physics to do it. Quote, while conducting analysis related to DARPA-funded project to evaluate possible structure of the energy density present in, present in a cashmere cavity as predicted by the dynamic vacuum model, reads the actual findings published in the peer-reviewed European Physical Journal. By the way, these are highlighted words that lead to links that lead to other stuff. A micro-nanoscale structure has been discovered that predicts negative energy density distribution that closely matches requirements for the Al Alcubierre metric. God, these fucking words, they just fuck up everything. Yeah, this guy's name, I'm sorry. Uh, and that, in turn, opens the door to investigation of possible future investigation of warp fields and potential applications. Scientific study of the potential of warp drive is now officially on the table. The warp bubble... Observe, though, is tiny. We're talking nanoscale tiny. And a result of negative energy reaching using casmia cavities, exploiting some of the bizarre quantum physics of these unusual structures. While this is very much a beginning, it opens the opportunity to do more research into the specific question of warp bubbles and Alcubierre's equations. Because as it happens out, Alcubier turned out to be right. Now, again, this is an article I have several here. Um, I, you know, I get a feeling, just like with the antibiotic thing and um, some of these new breakthroughs, that a lot of people look at these things and think, oh, this is... It's happening now and stuff like that. But this could be stuff that's decades down the line. But I do feel if we can start getting these things together and have a plan, and, you know, people are smarter than me, obviously. You know, we got, maybe I won't be here, but we'll have generations now that might be able to, what, roam the galaxy in different parts? And let's think of the worst case scenarios of everything. Our son's going to die. It's going to blow up and suck us in, right? So we have to get out of our solar system. But and you say, well, what are black holes? And our solar system is merging with another one. It's crashing into 
It's already happening, they said, by the way, which is fucking fascinating. I'm going to do a science thing on that. Um, you know, two galax our galaxies merging with another one. And so what happens? Well, we got to get out of this whole area. We're in trouble. All right. So let's go even further. The whole universe is, uh, you know, becoming one big black hole, entropy, and fucking all these things. It's a dead universe. Well, we got to find another universe. We got to create a warp bubble, go through a wormhole, whatever. Like, these things in science fiction could be, these foundations could be laid right now. The silly, I say silly, discovery by accident. Could be the template, like when Star Trek, when you talk about Cochrane and, you know, who set the precedent for all this advanced technology, and it's happening. We've got quantum teleportation. You don't get me into the quantum stuff. Me and my friend love to uh, talk about it, and of course, I win most of the debates. But anyway, we have some great things with disease, and just think if we could you know, get the human body to live for as long as it wants. Meaning, you'll have... Alright, yeah, if a building falls on you, you're dead. But imagine wiping out disease and cancers, and people would, like, lay in bed and go, well, you know what, I, I, it's time for me to go. And they, they can leave this earth on their own. But if you could have, like, 200-year lifespans, and you can increase that and unlock our fucking potential as human beings... It is not totally impossible to think we can escape our solar system, get to another galaxy, perhaps go from another galaxy to the greater outreaches of, you know, the expanse of space and that um, edge of the universe that's expanding faster than the speed of light kind of craziness. And our universe is dying. Let's go to another one. Or maybe let's create another one. All these things, all this imagination, all this wonder and excitement about science fiction is grounded in stuff like this. There are people in fucking laboratories doing experiments and by accident finding things like this. Like, the article says, the guy in 1894... Oh my god, I'm gonna ruin this fucking guy's name. Um... Albuquerque? <laughs> Alcubier? And he has these, you know, theories and his scientific equations and it looks like it could be real, but no. Now... We have one, which is just mind-blowing to me. This is some great stuff. And again, if I get punked, I get punked fine. But I'm not going to worry about it getting humiliated because, I'm, you know, this unlocks the child wonder in me. And at 51 and going through what I've gone through in life, I'm not worse than anybody else, but, you know, we all have our stories. These things, like, let me feel a release from what potential the future has and yes maybe we'll blow each other up and whatever but i don't think earth gives a fuck isn't joe rogan type things like you know what was it uh george Collin? like the earth will shake us off like fleas like you know but again you're not stopping the sun from going supernova in four billion years or whatever and i'm sorry but there's no heavens gonna open up in trumpets and these imaginary gods are going to come out, whichever god you want, is going to prevent it. Oh, maybe somebody will invent some kind of rocket that will reignite the sun and make it younger again, or give it the process it needs so it doesn't go supernova and swallow us up. I mean, but what would that be? The Oh, that was the purpose of the divine or whatever. Anyway, I don't think we can escape the science and the facts we know about the universe. And here we are, creating a warp bubble by accident. I am staring at a gift my friend gave me of the USS Enterprise 1701 from the original show. I have on my phone right now my Star Trek game. I've role-played Star Trek with all the techno babble and all the craziness. It is part of my fiber of my being. It is, obviously you can see, besides doing movies and TV shows and bullshit, I love doing science stuff. And I also love doing psychology stuff and helping people. But that's more of a private thing where I just, you know, talk to people as friends and that type of thing. But this just blows my mind. Again, I said, you know, goosebumps. Just reading the article. It's just 
fascinating to me. How far we can go. And if you think, oh, no, we're spaceships, whatever. But what about sending a tiny particle or a little computer chip surrounded in a warp bubble? Because you know what they're doing now. They've got these um, <clears throat> light sail little things, like the size of your thumbnail, I think. And what they do is they launch them from the satellites and then hit them with a laser. And it's like the fastest thing we got that's traveling to other galaxies. I don't know what the numbers are, like if it's, you know, a certain, like, 25% of the speed of light, like, whatever it is. And they can gain information. And now when you talk about quantum entanglement and stuff, yeah, we might not be able to communicate faster than light, like, with words and stuff, but information can be gotten quicker. We can get feedback on, you know, what all these other class planets that are out there, but we'll never get there in time. Well, Perhaps you can use a warp bubble. And what if it's just finding another civilization out there? You want to contact them and, you know, you don't want to wait 10,000 years for a response. All this is just the, you know, all the, uh, you know, hurdles we've got to face and how physics work. And holy shit, am I super excited. I bypassed the, um, the disease, antibiotic thing, because this, this, again, I hope everybody could be, you know, given long life and stuff. And it was uh, another one I read about uh, uh, one of the first human trials for something. They edited her gene for, like, heart disease or something. And it's like a success so far. I mean, it's only one thing. But they all start somewhere. Some start as an accident in a fucking lab. Looking at the cashmere effect, trying to get energy out or whatever. And that was that recent breakthrough too. Remember with Fusion I did not too long ago. We are super talented, smart, ambitious people. Yes, we have our faults where this, like, I think I saw a Google map image of, like, huge slavery going on in some country. I don't want to fucking say it. I don't know. I don't know what the name was, but, like... The bigger it's biggest it's been since the fucking dark ages or whatever. Like, yes, we're still fucked up, but there are people out there, good people, smart people, curious people, that in some sense are humble enough to say, hey, this might not be for me. But what foundation can I set? Can I start building the path to breakthroughs like this and what our future looks like? Again, even if I go best case, worst case, and I say, okay, look, I, well, I believe, facts are pointing to that direction, that our sun's going to swallow us and just melt us and whatever, fuck it, it'll turn into whatever, it'll, four billion years or whatever. And it's like, to people right now, that doesn't make sense, so who cares, right? These are our lives, this earth is a place we wipe our feet on before we go to this great fucking place where our invisible worship fucking person is and everybody's a zombied you know uh brainwashed type shit and what we're gonna sit there and watch our um descendants and ancestors get swallowed up by a sun like is that the you know is this the plan the divine plan i'm glad these people are doing these things they're looking at science the facts getting progress, building on things, realizing their mistakes, correcting them, or throwing it out totally. Like, I'm sure they would might be thinking of throwing out this warp theory thing. And then all of a sudden, they're looking into another thing, and they find a, a warp bubble. I still can't believe when I started reading this that I got goosebumps, because I've done 40s, Fucking articles, like I read them. I mean, the first one, I didn't, it had no links, and it gave me these, my spidey sense went off that it was clickbait bullshit. So I had to go like three more sites, and it's like, oh, I know this already, and I already put it down that I was going to do a podcast on it. But as I'm sitting here reading it, and I guess it's the, maybe some of the joy of doing these podcasts, is I'm not doing a live thing with feedback, but... 
it feels like I'm sharing something special with people. Even if it's my love and my nerdiness. And maybe that counts for something. Because we are, like I said, awesome individuals. We're fucking good, bad, everything in between. And I think it all comes down to the brain and how it works and our genetics and environment. And there's somebody in a lab right now just doing their work. Their studies in science and what it leads to. Building on other things that were, you know, set before them. On these rules and how the universe works and the physics. And boom, they create a warp bubble. A fucking warp bubble. I mean, I could have put an image. I wanted to put an image of the Star Trek ship in the warp bubble. Because that's technically their thing. Um, Like you could say... Star Wars is hyperspace, so that would be like, uh, I guess, I uh, don't know, no, see, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot, but, uh, <laughs> string theory, right? So, your ship would slide between another dimension that doesn't have to travel as long a distance, and then you come out this other, hy- or whatever, but in Star Trek, it's always been a warp bubble is, you know, and Michu Kaku has talked about this, about the power requirements, and all this stuff and like what you could see civilizations being in grade zero, one, two, like we're like zero. But man, does this get me excited? Does this fill me with some wonder, some, you know, thoughts and imagination of what could be in the future? Even if I'm not here, I get joy out of going next door and um, saying, well, my landlord owns the both buildings. And he has a vitamin store next door. And the woman who works there, we help each other with the parking spots. And she had a kid, and the kid's about four years old. And um, I just get joy. She's like medicine. I go over and say hi, give her a quarter. Well, it started with me. Every, okay, so I have a potty mouth. And every time I um, go there and pay my rent or, you know, talk about the parking spot or something, you know, the F word slips out of my mouth. So I had... I made a deal. I said, okay, well, I'll give her a quarter every time I do it. By the way, she's probably rich. However, I trained myself not to curse him anymore in front of her. So I started having a big wad of quarters in my pocket going, she's, I'm not doing it no more. I can't give her a quarter. So she gives me a high five. She gives a quarter. Anyway, it's the joy of knowing that maybe this little child and my brother's nephews and all the kids in the world, like, uh, who knows what age like, for me, I need to get to 76, I think, before I would see a breakthrough. So, like, 26 more, 24 more years-ish, where I could see legitimate getting an injection, and I would be 76 and pretty healthy and stay that way for a while. But these children, the kids, imagine, they're going to be going to school, and one kid's going to pull out his uh, little ID card, and it's going to say, Born on Mars. Like, place of birth, Mars. Like, that is happening. That's going to happen. Maybe not in my lifetime, but you can definitely see it for the next generation of kids. Without a doubt, little things like this, these breakthroughs, these wonders. What inspires me, what gets my creative juices flowing. Just awe and just humble knowledge of where i am in this world again i say this once in a while i'm grateful to be born from the parents grandparents and in new york and like i have air conditioning in toilets and it's just humbling and there's people in the lab right now by accident creating a warp bubble i don't know but it just gets me crazy excited Again, I know I'm a nerd and I play Star Trek and Star Wars and all these things, but I don't care if it's a fucking nanoparticle size or whatever. It is amazing if it's true. And if I get punked, hey, you got me. I got punked once. Um, One viewer noticed it. I did a trailer reaction, and it was a put-together fan thing. And it wasn't a legit trailer. But there's a little trivia right there. Anyway, real warp bubble. Discovered by accident. This is amazing to me. I hope people enjoy this. 
just fascinates me uh, to no end. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.